Hello everyone, this is Adam with S'more Fun RV Rental. We're here at Camping World at um, right by the Z Max Dragway Concourse. They got camping sites. I just wanted to do a quick video. You pull in to your spot, now what? So this should help out some of our renters. Um, quick little video here. What you're gonna need, how you're gonna get set up. So we have electricity here. So we got site Q11. All right, so we have electricity. There's your sewer line, your sewer uh, drain. There's your water spout. And then you see your boundary lines. So you pull up. When you for first pull up, check out your boundary lines. You want your sewer, sewer drain to be on your driver's side. So we're on the driver's side there. All right, and then you have your city water connection, which is right behind it. And so you got water, sewer, and power. So your power's right here in that container. And we're all set up, because if, if this would have been on the opposite side, it would have been harder to do. As you can see, most people are pulling in to their side, or backing into their side. <clears throat> all right so we're all we're backed in another thing to consider is look at your boundary lines and your slide out so we got plenty of space on this side so this unit has a slide out on each side that's where we at there's our boundary line straight across plenty of room on that side and you have your, your line on this side and we got room a lot of times there's a pick like there's a, a picnic table there or something make sure that is clearly moved out of the way sometimes they got guardrails separating the campsites watch those too because they sometimes they're tall enough to catch the end of that so the picnic tables out of the way both sides of the slide outs are clear you see our sewer hose our sewer drain our water spout and our power another thing is to consider is how level are we now we're on a rock field here, um, so you're gonna do the best you can to get level. Most people stay here long term, you know, like over there have um, they've ordered. They have you can run over blocks. So let's get started. You're gonna do the best you can if you're only gonna be here for a few days and you're not here long term. So put the put the uh, level on your bumper there to get an idea where you're at. So, as you can see, we need to come up on this side. Okay, so that looks good enough to where we can, just for our video, the stabilizing jack. You got your stabilizer jacks. Those will adjust your level. Those will adjust it this way. So you're gonna be, your stabilizer jacks are gonna help you this way. All right, now you can, Let's say we're slanted and the RV is downward. <clears throat> Your best bet is to, you can run over or you can put um, orange blocks underneath your tires there. So if you're gonna be there for a week and you're willing to get set up and get it all together, you can use these blocks right here. Um, we had, I did this before um, the racetrack about three of them four of them should work and what you would do is you would set it right here and you would drive up on top so you'd have two so we would be adjusting it this way and with the bumper and the stabilizing jacks we're adjusting it that way all right so first thing you want to do is check how level you are because a lot of these fridges they run the refrigerators are run off a coil system and um, they need to be leveled to work efficiently all right so what do we got here i'm going to show you some stuff that you're going to need everything you're going to need is going to be in this storage container i keep everything organized your flushing hose right there clearly it's labeled flushing hose not drinking water this is your fresh water hose so this is the hose you're going to want to use all right, so everything's in that storage container that you need. What do we have? This sidewinder is to 
have your sewer hose go out of incline it stretches out that way your sewer drains downward just in case you got a 30 so 50 amp to 30 so um, this unit rv is a 30 amp hookup and if you get to a campsite and all they have is 50 you have your adapter our power line goes in there and then you have this would go into your breaker box you have an rv water filter this this is one piece this is a high pressure uh, regulator and this would go into your water hose that way you're not jet streaming water into your unit then you have your uh, your adapter for your sewer drain hole and then your sewers will always be in your bumper one on each side all right so here's our so this would be your stored water this is for stored water only you won't be able to hook your high pressure regulator in there it does have a runoff but if you were a lot of times a lot of our renters are first time campers and we're assuming that they're starting fresh on everything so this is not where that would go you would go into your city water connection right here although it does have a runoff i would assume if you were to not pay attention to it for a few days it would eventually overflow so that's for your stored water uh, that's for if you're you pulled up to a spot and you don't have one of those but if you have one of those boom we got city water connection would hook up right here you would have your um rv filter i'll have it all set up um we're going to transition into this look from here into what it looks like set up and you got your black lever and then you have your gray lever the black lever is for your uh toilet water this is all your toilet water that would be stored in that tank unless you have one of those this is your gray water for all your sink water this is the cap once we're set up we're going to go in a little more detail on how to drain and um if you're staying at somewhere with campsites what to do what to have open what to have closed all right i'm going to go ahead and set everything up and finish off with that video so we got our leveling blocks also, you can put these underneath your stabilizer jacks and crank them down. So for the stabilizer jacks, you have your hand crank. We're not going to be needing this. And here we go. Let's get set up. All right, we're back. And before I fire everything up, I wanted to show some, some stuff here. So here's our power cord. Okay, it's a 30 amp cord, has this cap. Okay, you put it over there for convenience. Right there, please don't lose that cap. Okay, it's in the, and then you're stored in this storage container. So you're gonna feed it through that hole. I went behind the tire. So it's underneath and into your breaker box. I got my RV water filter with my high pressure regulator right there. You replace these every so often. Uh, if you're staying for a while, read the package and you see how long that particular one lasts for. All right, so we got the sewer hooked up. I got the sidewinder underneath it. This time we had to use both sewer hoses. So luckily we have two, one on each side of the bumper. So water's hooked up. We got power, we got electricity, we got sewer. We got room for our slide outs. And we are good, ready to go. First thing I wanted to talk about is power. All right, <clears throat> so you have your 50 amp breaker in the middle, you have your 30 amp breaker, then you have your 20 amp. So we have 50, 20, 30. I have an adapter, let's say that it just happened to be only the middle one. There, I have an adapter for that as well, and I have the adapter for that as well. But we are a 30 unit, so we plug it in there. So I plugged it in, make sure both breakers are off. Main power is off in the trailer. Both breakers are off. Okay, now we can fire it up. You don't want to have the breakers on and go uh, putting your power cord in there. It's not going to help. So we flip the switch. Boom. That's it. We got power on the inside. <clears throat> for water. You don't need to crank it full blast. 
does not need to be full blast. That is uh, maybe about three or four turns, uh, maybe halfway, if that. You can tell we have power now because lights are turned on. Boom, so we don't want that running when we're on the road because uh, that probably will stay on once you unhook that power. All right, so sewer, you want it running down a hill. We did water, power. All right, so this is where things get a little tricky, but it's actually simple. If you uh, pay attention to your gauges, you pay attention to your water usage. Um, we are full hookup here, so that means we do have sewer, but that mean you don't want to have both levers wide open. I have the gray lever open, that means water's running out. Anytime you use a sink, it automatically drains. But with the black tank, it's a little bit different. <clears throat> I don't know any other way to explain it, but I was told it was called a poop pyramid or a shit pyramid, whatever you want us to call it. But it's a disaster uh, for your tanks if you're doing it wrong. So when you're camping, let's say you got full hookups and you're staying for a week. You want to keep this closed for about a day and a half. Okay, you don't want it wide open because it's not everything is going to drain so it's got to come from the toilet down cross the tank drain so the best way is to keep it keep it closed for a day and a half let it fill up a little bit then empty it then flush it out flush out what's ever in there because what happens is if it's wide open not everything is draining across the center or draining across your tank so what would happen is you'll get a buildup somewhere in the center maybe from maybe to start off with just toilet paper and over time it'll build up. So, and that would be disaster. And you'll have a mountain, pretty much a pyramid of poop in your toilet paper, whatever else is sticking down there um, in the center. And then you'd have to drop the tank and it'd probably be a costly repair. So you can keep your gray wide open. Just to sum it up, your black tank, if you're gonna be there for three, four, let's say you're there for three days, you're there for the weekend. The first day, um, leave it closed, use it as normal. Second day, maybe the middle of the day or at night, whenever, open it up, let it all drain out. And you can just, you don't even need to put the flushing hose down there, you can just hold your foot on the toilet seat, uh, the toilet, and flush it. Just hold, hold your foot down, let that water flush everything out. Flush, 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 flush. Close your lever back up once you're done flushing it all out. You can always keep that one open. So right now we are closed. <clears throat> Sewer's draining. I guess some things that I notice is sometimes if you don't have it going straight down right here, it'll pull up right here. So you wanna pay attention that there's no pulling up there. You know, you can, after a few days, just kinda of make sure, you know, guide it all the way down, make sure everything's going down. <clears throat> you can put a brick right there or a block something to make sure that is secure. I know they have rubber fittings. They got all sorts of extra stuff in there. All right, so stabilizing. So since I'm only doing this video and I'm leaving, and we're not hanging out, this would work for me. All right, it, so the stabilizer jacks are down. We're not, lev we're not as level as I'd like to be. So in this, in this uh, scenario, as you can see with the the unit to the left of us, they ran over a two by four, it looks like, on this side, which is exactly what we would need. So you can use your blocks and you could put two on each side. So you would have to put them directly in front and then you would run over your orange blocks. All right, two to three. One never really does it because it sinks into the ground. So two to three. All right. So if we were to run over blocks on that side, it would raise us up. And that's what we need. And you might be able to get that if you were to put more, a couple more blocks under there, but you don't want to over crank your stabilizer jacks. They're not meant to, you know, pick up the whole side of your trailer. Um, I know some of the self-leveling jacks are, you know, when they level that sometimes even your tire could be up off the ground but get it to as close as as to level does not need to be dead center in the middle get it close so for this for this uh campsite if we were staying here 
I definitely would run over two blocks. <clears throat> what I would do is I put I put one block right here, right underneath it, and then two blocks. So one block right here and then two blocks. And and that way you're not going straight up on the second one. You're gonna run over that first block and then right over the second one. You're gonna need a spotter for that. And I would do that on both sides. And that should do it. All right, let's go on inside. So we got power, sewer, water, all on the side, right side. So we have our electric awning, which is push button, slide outs on each side. We double check, we got room on both sides. Main power switch is on. We have power. radio turned on the radio runs off of both batteries it runs off your engine battery and it runs off of your house batteries there's the remote it's always right here just turn it off so we have power everything's hooked up let's check our fuse box no blown fuses a red led light would pop on next to the fuse if we had a problem in there but we don't have any problems we don't need to start the generator. We don't need to start the generator because we have power. Fridge. Fridge would go directly to auto. We don't need gas. We have power here. We don't want it running off of our propane tank. We want it running off power. Stove works off power, so we're ready to go. That's why I like hooking up with full hookups. We're, we're, we're pretty much ready to start camping. No need for the generator. Slide outs, one, two. So we have slide out one, slide out two. Water pump, we do not need because we have water. Water pump is what you would use for the stored water tank that we were talking about earlier. LP gas, that is your, for the water pump if you don't have power, but we have power so we're just gonna hook that on that means it's gonna heat the water using the power we don't need to use the propane gas to heat the water so if you were didn't have power you would use your water pump for water and you would use this to heat your water that means you're using your propane tank so you got to be mindful of your tank okay because you're if let's say you're camping and you don't have any power sewer or water so you're using gas to power your fridge, plus your stove, um, heat, uh, hot water. So be mindful of how much you have. So we're about two thirds full. It doesn't run, it, it does pretty good. I would say um, a weekend trip would use about half a tank, to be honest, depending on how much usage. Fresh water, two thirds full, we use a little bit. Our black tank is, so we're ready to pull the black tank and a gray tank is just about empty um, right so slide outs so when i was talking about the black tank so now we're now we're gonna pull that lever remember about a day and a half you keep your black tank closed and then after a day and a half pull it let it run gray tank stays open so this is when you have sewer hookups so slide outs extend retract before you extend, make sure you have a spotter, make sure it's clear on the other side, there's no tables, there's no nothing, and you just extend it. So if it doesn't work the first time, it'll work the second time. See, I clicked it first, didn't work, I didn't hold it, released the button, clicked it again. And you just hold it all the way. do the same thing for this slide out you would hold extend slide out two all the way out 
and to bring it back in. So before, let's say we're going home and we're bringing it back in, check the areas that slide up. Make sure, you know, sweep, dust, get it, get all the junk out of there. Make sure there's no socks, no, you know, because everything's going to get ran over and it's going to get in the rollers and it won't be good. Make sure that driver's side seat is pulled all the way up. If uh, you're tall and you're driving and it's all the way extended, it will catch that railing on the way back in. So to retract, slide one, retract. Hold it until all the sounds went away. It's leveled, it's tight, it's it's pulled in. Heat and AC you would just turn on. So they have it on auto. We want to keep it on on. You can put on auto, set your thermostat, it's and um, get the same results. So we have cool and heat. So you got your AC and heat. You got your high and low, and you have your auto. You set your thermostat. If you're camping when it's cold it's easier to maintain a temperature than it is to bring the unit all the way up to let's say it's cold 65 in here and you want to bring it up to 80 it's going to take forever to do that but if you maintain a certain temperature it um you'll be able to maintain heat better on your trip and just remember if you have power run the heat um uh, you're good to go but if you're boom if you're camping and you're on the road and you don't have any hookups, be mindful of your propane, be mindful of your water, be mindful of your tanks. All right, so that's everything for getting set up. Now, uh, stay tuned for the video on what to do on how to make these beds. We've got a TV for each bunk bed. That's a bed, that's a bed, that's a bed. There's two ladders up top there, one ladder for there, and one ladder for the bunk house. You have a privacy curtain. Also have a privacy curtain there. The master bedroom does have doors. We got coffee. All right, that's everything to get set up. The only thing about this video would be how level we are. We're not the best level, but like I said, most people here who are staying long-term, they have custom, custom fittings. Uh, wood to insert underneath your wheels and that's because they're staying for a little bit but if you're staying for a couple nights being you know perfectly level is not top priority as long as you're comfortable all right let's put everything away and we're out of here remember everything you need will be stored in the storage container you got two containers in there with um, more supplies, chairs, your hand crank, sewer hoses are right there. R please remember to uh, crank up both jacks on both sides. When you disconnect power, make sure everything's off on the inside, main power's off. Then turn off your breaker, then remove your power cord. Make sure you flush. Flush your hose out uh, if you're leaving for the day. All right, we're out of here. We're leaving for camping. Then open up both levers, run the water, use your flushing hose. There's two spouts right there. Use that other spout on the other side with your flushing hose and follow the video I have on dumping. Same concept. You just be putting the water hose down there in your toilet, flushing it all the way out. Let it run, let it run, let it run. All right, some more fun RV rental signing out to the next video.